pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for another day. Thank you for the weather. Thank you for helping that rain to go around us and not to come here. Lord, you have been so good to us this week. We have felt your presence. We have been learning. We have been drawing closer to one another and closer to you. And we thank you so much for this opportunity. And I pray that your Holy Spirit will just be with us as we continue our day. And help us, Lord, it's preparation day. Help us all to be ready for the Sabbath before it comes. And um, help us to gain the blessing even now in our discussion. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. So the presenters can come. Let's sing a song, a hymn, or does anybody have a favorite hymn they'd like to sing? You can sit beside your husband. <laughs> uh and any songs um what heavenly music do we know that by heart for what wait where's my where's my phone we need to learn it because yeah it's heavenly music what heavenly oh you have it four five two check if you have a phone that might have a uh adventist hymnal on it that might be the number you need. Four, you could check if 452 is the right number. All right, so it's number 452. James White wrote this song. All right. All right, search. All right, I, I'm not the singer, so. <laughs> All right. That's okay. Not the hair, but. Somebody has a us over the Okay, we can go with that. We can do with that. And trancing. You want me to? I can. But I can't. Yeah, that's, the words are not coming out. That's okay. That's all that matters. Please undo us in music, please. Huh? Undo. Oh. Still oh. Still oh. I think that's, that's the, intro. the intro. Okay. Right can you hear it? here as well if anyone i think molo has questions from the box a few questions you want to start box? with a question from the box yeah and then start with these folks what if they have questions whichever one is fine too yeah you guys have any questions any questions oh.
Yes, he's coming. For Brother Whitmar? For, for us. All right. Go ahead. I'll repeat it. Right. I ha I have a good answer. You heard the question? Right. Go ahead. So, to give an example, so um, in this area, so there's like a little band. So, uh, do you know where Bancroft is? Yeah. So Bancroft is a little bit north here, right? So the further you get away from Belleville, Napanee, Kingston, and so on and so forth. Um, the prices go down. So there's a band of housing that's always kind of been there um, that goes from Bancroft to over by where we are, which is near Denby, and then it goes over towards Plevna and, and Ompa, right? Which is getting kind of close, like Ompa is not that close, but it's getting kind of close to Perth and Carleton Place and Smith Falls. That has been, there's like a band there of inexpensive ho housing because it's rural. It's the most rural in this area. So that's what makes it uh, the least expensive. And in general, the closer you get to a somewhat major city, the more expensive it is. So there is this like this band that kind of goes across here. Just even uh, just north of here, there's a, a Bordenwood Road. Uh, there's a little area in that area as well that is also fairly expensive, and it's not that far from here. And so, uh, what I'm saying is, is that area specifically right I, now, Maydock area is kind of expensive. Is it's a little bit more expensive, but north here, um, there's a band of air, that of housing that's always been less expensive. How much per acre? Oh, so she said, how much per acre? Okay, so, so there, it used to be, if you bought anything that was 30 acres or more, it was around $1,000 an acre. Now it's at least double that and sometimes triple that. So if you had 30 acres, it used to be, uh, you get it for 30,000, Samson. <laughs> um, and now it's, now it's between 60 and 80,000 or more. Um, yeah, it's very, it has come down, but like the, the whole COVID thing, for us, COVID was a message for us to get out, yeah. right? Um, and if you got out early, you would have gone in at those early prices. Um, and now we're paying the result of not doing that. But I have seen them settle out way more, and that's because of interest rates. Think, yes. Things are slowing down. Yes. So it was really bad, even in our area, for a while. Yes, yeah. you couldn't buy anything but it's, it's, so it's getting better. We actually know a real estate agent um, that we were hoping would Jeff. come. Oh, Jeff. I, yes, I, I called him, but he didn't come. <laughs> so maybe we'll try to convince him on Sunday again to come by right. and uh, see if he'll come out. But he's and a really a good guy. And he's a what? Jack Bernaski. So he, he That's he, another he, thing. Look for his name online. Jack. Bernaski. And but he but only he, does vacant yeah. land. If you're looking for a house, he doesn't necessarily do that. But he's a he's no. A, he has houses. But he it, sorry, I'm not saying he does. Right. But his specialty. His specialty okay. is property. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. Yeah. So that was what I was going to ask. Was yeah. The question, like, it was like, if, if we, we needed help, if we could contact you guys. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Right. Yes. So any more questions? Yes. There was another question. Go ahead, my sister. sister. Pat and, and the lady at the back. Sister Pat, go ahead. And Courtney has a question too. All right, Sister Pat, go ahead. Okay. So I noticed this year we've had a lot of rainfall, and I find with my garden, there's bugs everywhere eating the, the, the weeds and all my plants that were cultivated. They're just indiscriminately eaten, and I found that my. What do you call those bugs? For the little Earwigs? They like the water. Yeah, they like moisture. Yeah. Yeah. Whenever your, whenever your weather goes out of what's kind of normal, that's putting more stress on, the, on the soil system, the growing system, and the plants. And that a lot of times it brings them below the threshold where they can adequately protect themselves. And that's when you get those kind of pressures happening. 
it's telling you you're really not at a high enough threshold yet so that it can well you have to elevate the, the, the capacity of that system to to grow successfully it's simply not high it's it's not functioning at a high enough level so I have a question are the airwaves actually damaging or you just have like a bunch of them they're damaging okay yeah they eat the plants too so well I, I mo mostly I, I found airwaves a nuisance not so much yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. no they, they have well depending on the area they have eaten mm -hmm. the plants too yeah, sometimes that's a nuisance so it's not yeah. okay maybe okay. we need to Fair start enough. eating them <laughs> 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 no, thank you. <laughs> no, thank you. There's somebody out there, right? Is, um, I don't know if I had a phrase it, but if you're looking to move to the country, but you worry about, like, what, what are ways to make money if you don't, you know, like, to support yourself? If you, let's say you work in the city, which are, if to move to the country, you have to quit that. Mm -hmm. Just what are some thoughts that you have on managing that way of making money? I think even if you bought your property outright, just having an income of some sort. So yes, like yesterday we did hint to that. You remember, I'm not sure if you were I, here. I Sorry. And one other thing, I, I was watching this seminar with what's that guy name? Scott Rich, my friend. Yeah. Joshua Scott. White. No, the other one. The other one? Yeah, the other one. <laughs> so, so one other thing he said, and I'm telling, it's sound counsel. Moving to the country, you should be willing to change your occupation as well. Yeah. You follow what I mean? Yes. No, the other question now is, all right, I'm willing, then what do I do? What? What? Yeah. So, and this is where I want to hit the nail on the head. One thing that COVID did as an advantage was it opened up this huge market for working from home online, right? So most people aren't even considering that, but I don't know how many people that move to where we are specifically because property's cheap and they can work remotely. Yeah. And so there's this huge market of remote work. Um, the other one is, is that absolutely right. So when I'm speaking to my boys, I say, boys, I said, do you want to live in the country? Yes. I said, boys, well, then you have to think about what you want to do. Yes. It, like I said, okay, so um, our principle, the principle for us is that I want my boys to be a trade. I don't care if they, I don't care if they want to become pastors, right? That's good. If you want to become a pastor, that's fine. But first, yes. the biblical reason, the biblical was, is that, yes. the biblical model is, is that you become, you get to learn a trade first. Yes. Because the reality is, you don't know what you want to be, right? So learn a trade. So my boys, yes. my boys both have selected a trade that they like to do, and those trades reflect where they are. I'll give an example. If you want it to be HVAC, well, 90% of the time, that's going to throw you into the city. Not 100%, yeah, yeah. but if you're going to do H HVAC, that's going to throw you in the city. If you want to be an electrician or a plumbing, guaranteed. Perfect job for out in the country. Septic tanks, you want to install a septic tank? They don't install those in the city. Right. They install them in the country. It's a perfect job, right? And the list goes on and on that's and on. And that's from, a, a you know, like, I, that's I'm being that's kind of more like trades, but there's other trades as well. Yeah, yeah because we also have Mike, um, the per, sorry, the person that we moved with. He's an accountant, and he used to work with his uh, a firm, but now he's do he he still works with other people by online, but he also has his own business. So it's not only trades, but if you have some sort of skill you could build on, and if you're not a trades type of person. Then there's some skill that you sales, whatever you know, but you have to relook into it and just build that skill set so that you can make an um, income off of it, right? And, and another point I want to make also is, <laughs> I, I was in the literature ministry, publishing, right? Um, Glow Canada, me and Jonathan working together, and sometimes in life circumstances change things. Uh, I'm literature evangelist all over. It's in my blood, it's in my brain, in my eyes. Can you see it? <laughs> That's literature. And something happened and I had to change. And literally it was God who was doing something. Now I look back, I say, well, it has to be God. I found a skill. God gave me a skill. I shouldn't say I found it. God gave me a skill in following him. I, end, I don't know nothing about carpentry, nothing, zero. Never done it before, never even crossed my mind in doing it. 
and I build a house from the footing all the way up. Help here and there, right? But, right, and it's only by God's grace. But what I'm trying to say is, if you do God's will, God will do all that he needs to do in you, as long as you're willing. That doesn't mean you must have planned, right? Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying you should have planned. That's a foolish way of thinking. You need to plan. But irrespective of having a plan, you must still think, though, that if the plan doesn't work, God, this is God's will for me to be in the country, and he will show me what to do. So always think that. Go ahead, go ahead. So I was going to say, when we moved to the country, before we moved, Gord was a truck driver. Um, and he had to be willing to provide for his family. He had to be willing to do anything and everything that came his way. And through the doing of anything and everything, then he found things that he was stronger at yes, yes. and, you know, stuff like that. But God always provided for us, mm -hmm. one job to the next. And some were very different than other jobs, you know. Um, so you should try to plan, but sometimes that's going to change. God yes. may show you yes. that, no, there's something else, you know. So. And I think we have to remember that doesn't mean there's not going to be any trials. Mm -mm. That doesn't mean that you're going to move and the job's going to sit in your lap and you're just going to start gonna working as a carpenter and you're going to have so many clients <laughs> and no, no problems. When you're on the right path, there will be problems. There'll be challenges, there'll be trials. God gives us that to build our character. So even though you move and it's a challenge to find something, the income is just getting lower and lower and lower and lower and lower and nothing's happening, that doesn't mean you're not on the right path, right? You have to continue to trust. Sometimes God has to do it for us to realize you're not providing for you, I'm providing for you, mm -hmm. right? And you have, sometimes he has to get us to that point, as painful as it is sometimes. So, and so that when he does provide that for you, you then are saying, well, this is not really what I'm depending on. It's God, and I could use it however God wants me to. It's not something you're holding on to because you need to survive. You realize, I don't need to survive on this, so right? One other one was, uh, and because we're kind of talking, and we, in camp meetings past, we've had talked about it, but market gardening is another one, and that's kind of more his subject, but um, the whole point is, is that like, um, it's, it's easy to do in the country. I mean, that's one of the, like, um, by the sweat of your brow you shall eat. Um, there's lots of examples of, of um, people that tilled the soil in the Bible, and the point is, is that it, it's hard work, but uh, it is also fulfilling. So market gardening is another one. We had a, we had a gentleman, I can't think of his name now. Um, he did something with, uh, he did microgreens. When he decided, he was also, he did carpentry, but he wanted to do something to work with people, and, and, uh, and he did microgreens for a while. We also had friends that, uh, it just made me think of Philly and Adam. Yes. Um, sometimes you'll think of a business opportunity and, and it'll change a little bit, but it'll be a success when it changes. And we had friends that, um, they, we had a farmer's market kind of situation in our area, and they would come and they, would, they built a pizza oven and they would sell pizza. And then it came a year, they were doing okay. They were doing okay, but it came a year where there was dry, uh, you burn know, ban. burn ban and they wouldn't even let them do the pizza oven. So then they started to make them at home and they started to put them in a freezer and they started to go to like Ottawa and, and get a clientele and sell them. And that ended up doing way better than what they were doing they before, have, they right? Have a huge business. And now they've paid off at least one place, maybe two, yeah, they have a couple you know, of in the country. So they're very entrepreneurial and, and, and they work the system and, they, and, and they're very successful. But they had to just shift gears a little bit. Right, so sometimes something, if it's not successful at first, pray, you know, pray about it and see if there's a way you can shift gears and do something different with it. Servio, go ahead, brother. Oh, was somebody before him? Come there was a lady at the back. Okay, the lady at the back and then Servio. Yes. Okay. I'm very impressed with your hot shower for the ladies. Can you tell me about that? Don't see any solar panels. So, so, um, it's a tankless. Water out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> It's, He's it's, a miracle worker. We gotta watch this guy. Man. I'm it's, glad it's working this year. It, it's, uh, it's propane on demand. It's it's propane water on demand. So I, I just it's normally goes in your house, except I mounted it on the shower stall, and I just converted it from garden hose garden hose in, and it and, and it. But there is also a coil on the roof that we'd years and years gone by. So it goes through this coil. 
and then goes down to your shower. So it's also solar powered, but initially it's basically always propane on demand. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. You're welcome. So some homes, like, like, sorry. That's, that's something we are considering in doing in our home. One reason is because we're thinking of going solar, right? And um, up north, sometimes we don't get enough sun up where we are in the winter time. The days are very limited sometimes. And um, hot water can become a problem if you don't source the hot water through your wood stove. But I don't want that system for, vi for different reasons. I want to get into it anyway. But anyways, we're thinking of either getting that or hot water tank, the typical hot water tank, and, and probably just use one um, element during the winter time. Mm -hmm. But that's one thing I'm thinking of doing. Any more questions? Yeah, you said Serbia. Yes, Serbia. And then Serbia. Mm -hmm. uh, I felt that in regards to uh, the question that was asked. Mm -hmm. Yes. Like what you so there's, there's options. Uh, but I think that from, from the principle is that we have to think that there's no other way. Yes, yes, yes. And yes. then yes. The, the mindset the is change. what sets the opportunity. Yes, sir. You do have to work. Right. You have to be creative. Yes. But, but it's it's something that it's hard to explain. You may say, but it happened. If you say there's this is the only option. Yes. Right. And then you're creative. Then God the gives you creativity. Show up. Yeah. You have to work. It's not going to. You're going to sit down and say, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm, some, I'm, a back of, of, of bills are going to be dropped in the sky. But, <laughs> but you do have to say this is the only option. Yes. Mm -hmm. for, for just for a certain, just for us, when when this when the uh, pandemic happened, for us, for my family, and I'm glad my, my wife was also thinking the same. Is that we thought we don't have another way. We didn't have resources to buy a house. We have a house. We had a house, but we wanted to live in the country. Our place was nice, but we we wanted to live really far in the country, in the countryside. But when when the when the pandemic happened, we thought. There's no other way. We have to sell this house. And we didn't know where we were going. We just knew we had to sell the house. Mm -hmm. And it, it's risky. Yes, it's risky. But it was in the mindset brought the opportunity. Yes. So Amen. we couldn't buy a house. Suddenly there was a house. And then suddenly things started showing up. But it took time. But, uh, but it's the mindset. It's the mindset that, that pulls the opportunities. When God, when God says, okay, I can see where you're going. You're clear on where you're going. Yeah, I would say that when Gord, when we first came to the, like, I was determined to be at home with the boys. So we were living off one income um, when we first moved to the country. And I was making he $12 was making about an $12 an hour. And yet God paid all our bills and That's provided for us. So, <laughs> <laughs> But we were determined that we were doing the right thing. I went, I went from a, cushy, a very, very cushy job. Um, I had all the benefits, medical, I, I had eyeglasses, everything. And um, I was pay, being paid very well, and the Lord said, move to the country. So I, I made sacrifices because God said, go, and I went. And I had no idea when I went there. I bought a house. I didn't get a job where I, I, I bought the house first. And we should clarify the house is really a double-wide trailer yeah, yeah it was you know like he said open concept he said all these great things about it today but he didn't mention that on it's my list was not any size it was not anything fancy on my list was just functional and we got what we asked for yes and uh, lived there for many many years happily and and yes it wasn't until COVID hit that I really understood like really understood what she said when she said we will be like kings and queens living in yes. the country yes, yes. yes. because all my the, children were free I, and we were free and all the lockdowns but what is a lockdown to somebody who's allowed to go wherever he wants yeah, you children know, know much about what's going on free can we, we like everybody's talking about like your neighbors ratting you out we don't have neighbors <laughs> well, and the neighbors we do have didn't have that mentality. Right, right. The people in the country don't think the same way, though, brother. Yes. That's what I've seen. So yes. I have a question here. No, but you have a question? On the floor yes. first. All right, tell her what. No, what I'll do, I'm going to take Sister Pat and you, but I'm going to work with one question from the box. Is that okay? Okay. Is that okay? I, I got your permission, right? All right. And then I'll come back to you guys. 
I haven't studied the topic of country living. Someone told me to sell because my house is one million dollars. Should I just sell and move out of the city without considering anything? Should I do that? Should I do that? I haven't studied the topic of country living. Someone told me to sell because my house is worth a million dollars. Should I just sell, move out of the city without considering anything? Is that what God wants us to do? No. Does that sound wise? No. Should we ever do that? No. no. That's not God's plan because Ellen White counsels clearly. She says we should have wise plans. She said wise plans, right? But we should be also willing to give up our plans and accept God's plan. So while we're making our plans, keep in mind that God has a plan too. And if your plan is not lined up with God's plan, whose plan should go to the door or the window? God's plan. Ours. Yes, so let's keep that in mind. So uh, on that same subject there, it says, I haven't studied the topic. So the answer is study the topic. Yes, right. And so I, we used to have... We used to have these booklets here where we took country living yes. and we put it in chronological order. Because country living book is still good, but I want you to read it that when she said the time is coming, right? That was in the beginning. Right. And then sometimes they put those statements, though, near the end of the book. Because they're doing it topic-wise. They're doing it topically, topic right? right? Not but so then, so then we reorganized it so that it's in chronological order where, where she said in the beginning the time is coming. And in the end, she said the time, you know, the time has come. And it was after, you know, after 1888. So it's a, if you can read the book Country Living, that it, it, was the, it was the book that led me to, to have the desire to move. Also, you know, some of the stuff that David Westbrook was putting yes. out at the time. Yes. There's a whole bunch of good stuff, good messages yeah, talking about good. moving out. I mean, like the whole story, the sermon that... Uh, this gentleman here had uh, on uh, Lot and Sodom and Gomorrah. Um, there's wonderful sermons about um, about moving to the country and and the reason for it, right? Right. The benefits and the, and the benefits. And one of the major benefits that may may not be discussed is your children. Yes. Yes. Right. The reason is is that your children are. Uh, she talks about street education. She talks about um, offering your children up to Moloch. Right, sacrificing your children. Yeah. You there, yeah. there is children. Well, uh, you're, I, I'm, I'm referring to the world. Right. Right. And there is children that aren't here or can never be here. There is children that have died on the steps of our churches in 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 Toronto. They're gone, and they can never. They'll never come back. And they were shot by other people that knew them. They were known by those other people. It's not like it was random. And so we lost children to the city. And that's, that's I mean, that's huge. That, that, there's something we should be weeping about. I see some beautiful children here, and I see beautiful children that are living in the country. And, and, it, and it's the way God intended it, uh, us to have. It is 100% a blessing. There is, no, there is no negative for living in the country for your children. Zero. 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 Mm -hmm. Zero. Oh, my dear sister. I want to ask a it's so simple. The way you have done that water that comes by. Uh, <laughs> So, it's not copyrighted. So, great. So, it's so easy. It's so easy. It's not copyrighted. You can take pictures. <laughs> <laughs> take a boy. So, Graham, Graham is an engineer. He's, he has a brain for that, and he just came up with it. He watched some stuff on YouTube. But basically, it's just a hand primer bulb. For a for a boat, that's it. Just connect it to the water. It's not right. You take some photos there with your camera there, and you copy what's there. And see, Graham did. The person who made it, he couldn't come, so he's not here. Yeah, he's not here today, but he he's been here at several camp practical skill camp meetings. You like it, eh? Tell you what, next year we'll consider making one for you. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, sister. But. 
Amen. Than living in the city. The property taxes, all those things are cheaper yes. than in the city. Right. The However, problems. when you move to the country, yes. Satan don't like it. Who just said doesn't like it? Who doesn't like it when they move to the country? <laughs> Satan. Yeah, Satan. Satan. And when you come, yes. don't be surprised if you have some problems some? with your property <laughs> or where you're living. Yes. Because when I first It reminds me of uh, the angels taking Lot, Lot and his wife okay. out of the city, and they told him, don't look back. And that's really the attitude we have to have, is be determined that you're going forward and you're not going to look back. I've said it, apologies. Yeah, I just want to share an experience our family had. Um, you, you'd be surprised sometimes by what people would value. Uh, when we were at Eden Valley, we were out in the country, most of our markets were in bigger places and everything and we wanted to do something to earn some extra money and my wife was really good at making just plain whole wheat bread and so we would fresh grind wheat and she would make um, whole wheat bread from that and we would take it to the market along with the produce and everything and by the way we would start markets with 30 and 40 foot lines of people waiting to purchase our produce Amen. Um, and it wasn't, it wasn't just because they liked us better than any other produce vendor there. There were produce vendors that fill a bag for 10 bucks or whatever and, and things like that. You had that kind of competition. We happened to be the highest, highest priced seller in the marketplace. And yet we sold out at every single market. But we were bringing something better to them. We put the effort in to actually producing produce that was superior, that had an impact on people. But back to, the, back to the wheat bread. We decided to do that. We weren't sure how it was gonna go and everything like that. You're selling to the city, Wonder Bread is more popular there than, <laughs> than uh, wheat bread or so we thought. But usually people coming to the farmer's market are looking for fresh produce and healthier foods and everything like that. And within a month, we were selling 150 loaves of whole wheat bread a week. Amen. And for $4 a loaf, at that point, this was 20 plus years ago, 25 years ago, for $4 a loaf. And we maxed out at 150 because we just couldn't do more than that. We didn't have the facilities to do more than that. And the interesting thing is, some, what, I'm, what I was wanting to get at that would surprise you is, um, we had customers that would come late to the market and the bread would be all sold out. Wow. And they would be frustrated about it. So. Uh, a guy asked me, and I didn't tell my wife this, but a guy asked me, he said, well, where do you guys live? And so I told him where we lived and everything like that. I said, well, when does she make the bread? <laughs> I said, well, she gets up at 5.30 in the morning, and she usually has the bread coming out of the, the oven at about 7, and then it has to cool, and then we slice it and bag it and everything like that. So I hadn't told my wife that I told anybody that. So the, the next time she was baking bread, a, a, a bang, a knock came on the door when well, she was in there baking the bread at 7 o'clock about when it was supposed to come out of the oven and it was this man and I'll he said I have I, I have not been able to get your bread for the last several markets because it's already sold out when I get there and everything and so I was determined I was going to get the bread <laughs> and so she said well it's yeah, that's fine, but it's that's not cooled enough for me to slice it or anything yet. He said, just throw it in the bag, I'll take it. And he took like four or five loaves and, and uh, paid extra. He came all the way out to us. And paid extra. And paid extra. Wow. To, to be able to get the bread. Wow. So, and whatever you do, I tell my kids this all the time, if you, if you do whatever you do with care, with love towards other people, and you do the absolute best, because most people don't. Uh, and you bring them, you offer them something better, something as simple as a, you know, the funny thing with that too is one time we ground the flour and, and we had one of the kids grind the flour and there was chaff in it still, they hadn't winnowed, winnowed it. So when you made the loaves of bread, the bread had chaff in it. Mm -hmm. 
And so we, we, took, we realized that some of the one part of the batch was like that, so we had set it aside and uh, we weren't going to sell it. And somebody saw it, the bread there. We said, we, well, we're out of bread. And he said, no, there's some bread over there. And we said, well, that has chaff in it because the kids didn't winnow it before they, they ground it. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> and they, they bought it. Um, so when you're thinking about whatever you're thinking about doing, do it for the glory of God and, and do it for the, for the benefit of the fellow human being that you're nice. doing it for. Yes. And you would be surprised what simple things people would appreciate. I know I have several growers that live well out into the country. They do go into larger population centers mm -hmm. with their product through CSAs where they just bring the boxes and they do an online, they just do an online market. And people, they, they let them know what they have and people tell them what they want and they fill the boxes, bring it to a drop point and they've already paid for it ahead of time and everything, so very little time is involved. And sometimes they have it where people come and they get their boxes and because they want to minister too so they want the yes. one of the things with with when i've grown is i always wanted to do retail marketing and not wholesale because i wanted to interact with people, people. Yes. but you can you can be way out in the country and you can actually take advantage of the market in yes. the city yes. and you're taking something you're taking something better to them i told you the doc the story about the doctor you're you're taking something better to them that's going to actually impact them and it's going to draw them Yes. to you yes. Yes. and so you never know if you start baking bread you might have people knocking on your door way out in the country I mean they had to come 45 minutes which is not bad but they had to drive 45 minutes just to get the bread at 7 in the morning <laughs> I was going to say you got to go Five into the minutes. city to get your groceries anyways so you know if you have a product and you have things set up ahead it might be convenient to uh, sell it there anyway so and and one more thing about that uh, when I when I when I first moved out to the country I did a bunch of stuff and um, and I could always tell that the, the Lord was telling me where to go and what to do and, and 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 so on and so forth. And one day I was working on a roof and somebody drove by and seen me on the roof. He didn't know my name and uh, he had my name wrong. And but he came and knocked on my door. Remember you just mentioned I, he, like they knocked on my door to get bread. Well, this man knocked on my door and had my uh, had my name wrong, but was looking for somebody to do some work, right? But this man was pounding my door because he couldn't find somebody like to, 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 to do work they, like sometimes in the country you know like it's not like the city where there's thousands of carpenters he couldn't find anybody and so he's literally knocking on my door looking for me and that man still calls me and a long story short that this man ended up knowing my grandfather and there's this whole family connection and I was able to share Jesus with him even though they did not accept it 100 okay. percent but um, it, it, it opened up a, a, a door, right? And so most of, most of my interaction when I was, in, you know, not making good, really good money, it didn't matter to me because I was like having, having all these opportunities to spread the gospel and the Lord always blessed, always a blessing. It may have seemed like, uh, you know, like the, the amount of income that was coming in was so low, it's not funny. We were happy. The, the backdrop to that was that, that very day he'd went to work and it was at the beginning of our journey with working for himself. And uh, he had been doing some work. I'm trying to think if you were working in the forestry before that or where you work. But anyway, you know, maybe with anyway, some, yeah. Anyways, he had, the work that he had had thus far was ending that very day. And so that morning he's like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what I'm going to do after this. I don't know how. And he was kind of discouraged, and I was just encouraging him. I'm like, well, God knows, you know. Mm -hmm. And he went off, and shortly thereafter, this gentleman came to the door, and he's like, is Greg there, live here? And I'm like, George? or George, or something wrong, right? Something that's not And he's like, you know, I, I saw him working on a roof down over there, and I need somebody to work. Here's my card. And it ended up being a lot of work for a while, and now our boys actually work for his son. <laughs> so Small world. So yeah. there's a question here. It says, minutes. Um, no, three. three minutes, zero, zero minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Will I be lost if I don't move out of the city? And I'm going to answer that question. Can you read something for me, Andrew? The word salvational. I heard Adventists use that word. We don't understand the, the correct meaning of it. Salvational. Read what it says, Andrew.
Does that sound accurate? Yes. Deliverance from sin and its consequences believed by a Christian to be brought about by faith in Jesus. Does that sound accurate? Mm -hmm. Sounds accurate to me. It sounds like what the Bible teaches. Is country living salvational? No. Who said yes? No. <laughs> no. Let read it again, Andrew. Adventists don't know what the word salvational is. We don't know. Who does salvation come to? Christ. Christ. Who else? Nobody. What else Nobody. can law keep in save you? No. Why do you keep the law? Because you do what? Because we love Jesus. I don't like it. You know why? It puts people in bondage when we teach that works save them. It's legalism. It's very Catholic. It's actually leading to the mark of the beast. It's very serious. Are we supposed to live in the city? No. This is why it is very clear that we should leave. Some people can't leave now. Right? And God will tell them to leave when it's time to leave, right? We all won't leave the same time either. Amen. But God says we are to leave. Country living is not salvational. Help message is not salvational. Only through Jesus Christ salvation come. Amen. Having said that, are we supposed to follow the health laws? Yes. yes. Why do we follow the health laws? Because we? Because we love Jesus. Anything anyone has teach you than this is erroneous and it's another gospel and it's dangerous. Amen? Amen. Amen. Can you be lost in the country? <laughs> Will people be lost in the country? Yes. Right, so it's not salvational. But I encourage you, if you can leave, leave. The instructions God gave us was for our happiness. Yes. And for our and health. love. And out of love he gave yes. us. Yes. Nothing else, just love saints. Some Amen. women want to move, but the husband don't want to. Some husband want to move and the woman, so God is going to make both of them last? You really think that? That's how our loving father work? No. no. Leave here with peace, knowing that if God asks you to do something, you know you will do it. And if you can't do it, God is not going to ask you to do it. Leave here with peace. Jesus is with you. I have spoken, why I said it so strongly, I know people are struggling. People come here and they hear all these things and they say, man, I feel like I'm lost because I can't leave the city. Please don't feel that way. No. You have a thousand ways which uh, of we know not of which our Heavenly Father can provide for us. Just keep trusting Him, man. Even if you're a single mother or a single parent, just trust Jesus, please. That, that was one of the questions. Uh, I can't, and I know we're running out of time, but I can't, I can't afford to move out to the country. Right. Right. Well, situations. Uh, I've seen it in my. I've seen it with people I know. They can't afford to, to buy a house, and so. But I've seen them rent in the country, right. and they live right. in the country. Right. Right. And rent is cheaper. And rent is so cheaper. Think that too, guys. Don't and only think buying. Very good point, Gord. Yes. If you can rent a property in the country and find employment or yes. choose to do something different, then do that. And, and here's the thing. It, it's stepping stones. Yeah. Um, you're, you're living in Toronto. And in my opinion, Toronto is Sodom or Gomorrah, you pick. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? And then, so you don't want to be there. Well, okay, you can't live in... You can't live in or you don't want to live in Toronto anymore. Okay, so you move to Belleville. Right. Oh, right. and then right. there's a bad area in Belleville. I don't really want to move there. So then you move to just outside of Belleville. Right. And, and even there might be an apartment in a small town. Right. The member about me telling you about taking the temperature of the town. Right. Right. If there's bars, if there's cannabis stores, cannabis stores if there's uh, those, those adult places, all that stuff. You're taking the temperature of the town, right? And if the town doesn't have a very high temperature of, of vileness and sin, well, then it's a better place to be than Sodom and Gomorrah, right? right? Take your time, man. Take so your time. 
it, um, so that's right. It's 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 all a preparation. Less, less people. Less people. Less. less, people less crime. crime. Yeah. Well, it's so yes. Last question though. Last question. All oh, experience. Good. Right. And she said, first, before you think to go in the country, please come and live here uh, for a while. Amen. And then you will know if you like it. Right. My answer was, I was brought up in the country, I love country, and my husband too, and we want to move, but thank so, you so much. So, so, and you did the exact opposite of Lot. Lot pitched his tent towards Sodom. You were pitching your tent away from Sodom this is not where I want to go so if you pitch if your heart is in the right place and in the right direction the Lord will direct he will guide your path and it's yes. a journey Amen. it's Amen. a journey because when we were first looking to move we thought maybe we'd live half an hour outside a city like a major city and God had different plans for us but because he had different plans for us he also wanted to prepare us for where we were right. going to be and to be happy right. there right so he had situation arise so that we rented in the country a little bit outside the city for right. only a month or two. Yeah, but it a, was a it was a blessing. A blessing. Right. right. Just as um to go along with that as the last comment, I'm thinking, you know, a lot of times the Lord is the one mm. who guided. She didn't say, Okay, I'm gonna go to here first right. <laughs> and then to prepare myself for when I go over here. God is the one doing it. We have to have way more faith. God does so much for us. He orchestrates our circumstance so that we could be where he wants us to be. We shouldn't be doing it ourselves. Let God do it for us. And then we will be exactly where he wants us to be at the time he wants us to be it because he's the one doing it. We're not the one doing it ourselves. We'll when we first moved, say that again? We'll be ready to be there. Right. When we first moved, we were looking for 25 acres when we were living with my parents in Mississauga. We're like 25 acres. We ended up buying a two acre property, two point something, right? That's not what we were looking for, but that's what God wanted for us. Prepare us because there's so much work we could have done with that property, which we had to do. And then he moved us again. So you see, God is the one who does it. Let him do it. Don't run ahead of him. Don't lag behind him. Let him guide you. Let him guide Amen. you. Amen. All right. Every so. Step every step of the way so um the time is now up if you have any more questions you could come and see anyone individually uh brother whitmore is going to do his last presentation and after this we'll do our sabbath preparation for the rest of the afternoon so we're going to end with a word of prayer did you want to ask a question maybe you could trees planting trees yeah yeah, maybe you could ask him that personally. Uh, I'll share it when I get up. You're going to share? Yeah, we go ahead and break this, and then when I get up, I'll, I'll, answer, okay. I'll answer that. All right, all right. So we will um, end with a word of prayer. We could stand, and we could pray. Okay, let's pray. Father in heaven, we come to you in the name of Jesus for the forgiveness of our sins, and for washing in the blood. Cleanse us again, O oh God. Fill us with thy spirit. And thank you for dying for us, for saving us from our sins, O oh God. We thank you so much. Help us, Lord, in our hearts to accept whatever plans you have for our lives. And with regards to country living, dear Lord, just give, the, give us the willingness to follow where we are unwilling. And those who have the desire to buy but no funds, provide for them, Lord. Amen. And those who need someone to live with, provide for them as well. And I thank you, O God, and I praise your name in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.